I don't know if I should cry. I don't know how I should feel, man. But look, man, <laughs> family, y'all tuned in, man. This might be the last one. I don't know. But y'all here, man. The season's over. It's Super Bowl ended. This is the Halftime Show with your boy Dizzy and GB. I'm your one half of the co-host, Gabriel Bryant, a.k.a. GB. And this is my dog, my guy, big time future analyst, Donovan Clinton, a.k.a. Dizzy. Dizzy, Super Bowl. Yeah, man. First of all, this the last. This this the last one. We we kicking it off, y'all. See, I had to. You feel me? Finish how I start. If I'm gonna if I'm gonna start it like this, I gotta end it. You know, what I'm I gotta finish like this, man. Talk to me, yeah. Dizzy. Yo, man, this is it, bro. It's just a reminder how fast time go. I remember hitting you up when we mm-hmm. getting on that first Zoom call, not even recording, but just figuring out what the hell we was gonna do with this. So mm-hmm. uh, to be sitting here, at, you know, what four or five weeks later. Uh, and it's yep. already the last one. Uh, we'll get into, you know, what we enjoyed the most later on. But, you know, yeah. blue by, man. Let's, uh, let's end it off right. Let's do it, man. Let's let's just go ahead and get into it. We ain't going to waste too much of their time, man. First question, let's let's get to it. Let's, let's get to it. Talk yeah. to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I think first and foremost, before we hop in, just want to send uh, our prayers, our vibes, our thoughts with Kansas City. Oh, that <laughs> – Horrific oh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. shooting that went oh, down yeah. uh, at the parade, you know. So right. my thoughts and prayers, both of right. us, uh, to all of them. Um, no, but yeah, line, man, yeah, the the Chiefs they went ahead and got it done and have become uh, America's villain. I mean, nobody it seemed like nobody wanted to see them win, man. Facts, uh, facts, facts. Tight game all the way throughout to the end. Obviously, you get overtime and Pat Mahomes. Did it did his thing, man. Worked his magic, yeah, he, man. What were yeah. what were your biggest takeaways from the game, man? Uh, my biggest takeaways, man. If I just recap the game a little bit, man. Brock Purdy, he didn't play bad. Let's, if we being honest, he did not play bad at all. He, you know, he threw 23 for 38. He had 255 passing yards, t- t- touchdown, no interceptions. So he he what Cam Newton said, game manager, he he managed the game. Yeah. Great. Like he did what he needed to do. I he I, I saw him make some great throws when they need to be made. I saw him make some great throws. The throw he had to Ray, uh, Ray McLeod, like, bro, he, he was diamond out there. He was doing what he needed to do. He was putting the ball where it needed to be. I'm not mad at his performance. I'm not mad. Some people say that, oh, he missed a couple throws that really matter. Those are the ones you got to have. Those are big-time throws that you got to make. Yes, that's true. Although that is true, he was getting pressured. He was getting hit during those times. Yeah. The one in the red zone uh, when Chris Jones just came free. What what are you gonna do? He just had to dump it. He flicked it up. It was another one that he missed. He missed a couple, but every one of those he was getting pressure. So it's not like he just he just missed throws. Like he was getting pressure. He's about to get sacked. He's about to get you know what I'm saying smashed in the face. Um, they had about three sacks, so they did their part. They they did what they could do on defense. They didn't do enough. We would have liked to see Joy Bosa get back there and apply some more pressure. You know, apply more pressure. Um, Christian McCaffrey did what he did. You know, what I'm saying eighty yards both rushing and receiving. So he was he led it. He led the team. Um, he averaged about 3.6, almost four yards of carry. So he was – they were toting the rock the whole game. I mean, I think you could yeah. hear that. They were toting the rock the whole game. Um, he had a receiving touchdown as well, thrown by uh, Juwan Jennings. So, I mean, they just – they just – when the, the place that really hurt them, man, that fumble by McCaffrey, that fumble really hurt them. That blocked field goal really hurt them. You know, so – I think those are my big – it was those two plays. You know, the coaches always say it's about two or three plays that really yeah. are really going to – you know what I'm saying? The plays that really matter, that's going to dictate that game. You know, the plays that really were really pivotal, pivotal in the game, that shift the momentum, that could have been the plays to get you to, to get you to win. Those are the plays, man, in me, in my opinion. And the Chiefs played pretty good. The first half, obviously, it was a little dull. It was a little boring. Um, too many tur- – it was just turnovers on both ends, uh, muff punts. It was just It was just ugly. It was just ugly, but that second half they came out and it was it was on fire. Pat Mahomes did what he did: three hundred thirty-three yards passing, two touchdowns. He threw one interception. Uh, he led led the team in rushing, six six yards. Travis Kelsey, he cranked up towards the second half after we just seen him, but just just buck up. You know what I'm saying? That uh, <laughs> bit red. I don't know if yeah. I just I just don't know how it would have been perceived if somebody like me or you would have did that. Somebody like an a, uh, AJ Brown would have did that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Or somebody like yeah. a you know what I'm saying? One of those guys, Odell did that. You know what I'm saying? It would just been It'll, it'll, it'll be a little different. You know what I'm saying? I think yeah. we both understand that. But um, I, th- I like how Andy Reid handled that. Um, I mean, Travis – Travis, I mean, not Travis. Uh, Pat Mahomes was 
Pat Mahomes is out there like Magic Johnson, just dumping that thing around to everybody. I mean, it was like eight, seven, not eight out of the seven receivers caught a ball. Everybody but Richie James caught a ball. Everybody, everybody, including Travis Kelsey. That's nine. That's nine out of you feel me? So everybody he was distributing to everybody. He did that very well. It's a complete game. He didn't play outstandingly great, but he did. He did what he needed to do. <laughs> Three hundred yeah. yards, sixty-six yards rushing. Pat Mahomes, man, you can't bet against that guy. This the this the new age goat right here, man. This the new age goat. He done passed that baton. He on that last leg of the four hundred. <laughs> Tom Brady done passed that baton. He done passed that baton to Pat he Mahomes, gone. man. He taking it. He, he gone. gone. He gone. He gone too. Yeah. Now, yeah, I feel you, man. I think uh, this this game could be summed up by one cliche, corny saying that that mm-hmm. everyone in sports has heard before. Yeah, ain't how you start. It's how you finish. It's how you finish. It's, it's how, how you finish. finish, man. I mean, yeah. San Fran came out. The defense flying around. That boy Fred Warner, he a monster. Yeah, man. Fred, Fred, Fred Warner. Fred. Fred Warner flying around. Um, they get some early points on offense. KC yeah. three and out, three and out. You know, punting the ball left and right. And yeah. so it looked like this was San Fran's game to lose, which it was. Come to the second up. half. Come to the second half. The momentum completely flips. Yeah, here comes the Chiefs. Here comes Pat Mahomes. We get to OT. The Niners don't some for whatever reason don't know the rules of OT. They get the ball first, go down, kick a field goal, and then Mahomes goal. does what Mahomes does, man. So it's not about how mm-hmm. you start; it's how you finish. Um, you know, you said you said his name, and to me, if it wasn't for Patrick Mahomes being his quarterback, he would have been Super Bowl MVP. And that's Chris Jones, man. I counted at least yeah two two maybe even more times where Brock Purdy has a dude running wide open down the field and if it's and Chris Jones disrupts that if it's not for Chris Chris Jones being in his face Brock Purdy mm-hmm. probably completes those and then San Frank can kind of run away to me where that where it kind of shifted where in my mind I'm like okay like you you San Fran you messing up is when uh first half Pat Mahomes throws a pick he's trying to get the ball to Kelsey he throws a pick and San Fran yeah. gets no points out of that. They were on None. the positive side of the 50. They don't get a field goal, touchdown, nothing. And to me, mm-hmm. like we said, Pat Mahomes is on that on that goal tra- uh, trajectory. Just yeah. like Tom Brady, you let him linger you gotta around. You got to get them points, we can get them. Yeah, you let him linger around too. I mean, shoot, we saw Brady <laughs> come back from a 25-point lead. You know what I'm saying? So it's like you let them boys linger around, they're going to figure it out. I mean, Kelsey yeah. – like you said, he was frustrated only one yard in the first half. And then, again, not how you start, how you finish. He ends up with almost 100 uh, to end the game. And so, you know, these are them boys. That if anybody want to want to claim to be the champs, want to see themselves at the top, them. they got to go through KC, man. So uh, those are my takeaways from it, man. Yeah, yeah. Next question. They're running. They're running. Yeah. So on the flip side, obviously, you got the losers, you know. So yeah. everybody's talking about – um, you know, it's Purdy or it's this guy, it's that guy, you know, San mm-hmm. Fran just fired their DC, which everyone is upset about and rightfully so. Yeah. I mean, he was a great D coordinator, and after one year you fire him. It's a clear scapegoat um strategy by San Fran, man. But my question to you is who is to blame for San Fran not being able to finish this game? They were up uh, 10 points at half. Yeah. What happened, man? I mean, they didn't they just didn't. When you're playing the Chiefs, man, you got to, like you said, you got to put up points. You got to put up points. When they have mishaps, when they, when they, when they have those air of plays, those, those bonehead plays, like a pick, like just a fluky pick that Pat threw, you got to come away with something. I need yeah. something. Three ain't going to win you the game, but I need something. Give me something. I need something. Okay. It's, ah, man. I mean, I, to blame, the missed field goal is to blame. The blocked field goal is to blame. The, the fumble coming out hot. I mean, they came out hot. That first drive was like, whoo, whoo, whoo. the way they're running this ball, the way they toting that thing, it was there was it was getting positive yards every every carry. It was ugly. It was it was going down the field, going down the field, and then it ended with a fumble. That really was disheartening. That took the life out of them for a little bit. I think it was just like you said, man. Like we said, it's those it was those two to three plays, man, that really shifted the game. You know what I'm saying? It was it was it was the Chris Jones just coming just untouched in the red zone. Yeah. And, yeah, it's just those little, it's those little plays, those era of plays, those those plays, man, just turn out to be the ones that were the most pivotal in the game, man. It was ah, they ran the ball good, man. Like you, you can see that that was the intention going into the game. We're gonna ground and pound them. We're gonna run it. We're gonna run it. We and we're not shying away from it. We're gonna run it. And they did that. It just mm, they didn't. The receivers didn't really 
didn't really didn't really do much. So it was yeah, I man. What, what what about you? What you think? I I can't call it. What you think? Yeah, man. I mean, we talked about it before. You you know you a little more nicer than me, so you ain't gonna you ain't gonna get to point the fingers. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> saying no names. I got no problem with it though. I got no problem with it. <laughs> Kyle Shanahan, head coach and play caller for San Francisco 49ers. This is completely on him, man. I mean, yeah. look at look at the track record. First of all, we talked about mm. uh, Brady Brady's comeback. Kyle Shanahan was the offensive coordinator for the Falcons when yes. Tom Brady comes back. Go a couple years back when they're in the Super Bowl against the Chiefs. Same thing, 10-point lead. They lose it. Mm-hmm. This mm-hmm. time, 10-point lead. They lose it. Um, mm-hmm. there's two, there's two really big things, man. You kind of alluded to it. The running game was working, and then he kind of they kind of veer uh veer away from it. They um mm-hmm. in the third quarter, in the third quarter they had three three and outs in a row. Out of those nine plays, eight of them were passes. You ran the ball one time when you have yeah. the best back in football in your backfield. That's unacceptable, man. And that's how you lose those leads. If you run yeah. the ball, milk the clock, keep Pat Mahomes, Travis Kelsey, all them boys, keep them on the sideline. Just run the ball, yeah. run the ball, milk the clock. Keep the ball in the hands of your best guy on offense. And then uh, another thing that I think, you know, reports came out about it, you know, the next day or two um, that I feel is inexcusable is the fact that players are talking about they didn't know the rule change in, you know, overtime. You know what I'm saying? How how was it for us? You know what I'm saying? If if the NAI came out and said, you know, this change, this change, stuss in that team meeting, hey, look. Yeah, this is going on. Come on, man. That that's simple. You shouldn't. You shouldn't. That shouldn't ever happen. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because now you got uh, San Fran out there. They went in the toss, thinking, "Oh, they won the game. We we won the toss. We just gotta go down and score this thing over." No. Now you're yeah. giving Pat Mahomes a chance yeah. to match whatever it is that you do. So to me, that's inexcusable, especially yeah. when we look at these other coaches. And like you said, I mean. I'm one that I don't like to really point to race, but hey, if this is a if this is a coach that looks like us, is he getting a pass for that? And that's a know. player that looks like us. That you, that you mean you mean you meant to say player that looks like us? Yeah. No, I'm saying yeah. I'm saying if Kyle Shanahan looks like us, is he getting excuse oh, oh, for oh, these okay, type okay, of okay, things? Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. You're, but, you're absolutely but right. I want I want the Andy Reid. You're right. Yeah, you're yeah, right. yeah. I won't even go to. I'll go. I, surprisingly, I'll come to the defense of Dallas Cowboy fans because look at this. Yeah. If Mike McCarthy, if if the Dallas Cowboys lose a game and it comes out that Dak, CD, Micah, all these guys talking about, well, we didn't know the rules of overtime. We didn't know it changed. Everybody will be ready to exile Mike McCarthy, yeah, ready yeah, to yeah. give him the boot. So it's like – How does he not have uh, them prepared? How does he exactly, not yeah, – yeah, Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like we got to hold everybody to that same standard, especially Kyle yeah. Shanahan who is constantly getting back to the – Super Bowl, NFC Championship, yeah. always having these stacked teams. You got to get it done, man. So I, I'm putting this loss 1,000 percent on him, and we'll see if he's gonna shake back <laughs> next year, man. Yeah, man, he's got it. Yeah, you absolutely right. You absolutely right, man. That's well put. Obviously, I yeah, I agree. If it's somebody that look like us, you getting it that many times, man, and you ain't getting it done. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know how long his his tenure would be. Um, but you, you hit on some great points, man. You don't think they should have got Debo involved a little more? I know he got hurt in the second half. His hamstring tweaked. He came back, though. Know, but in the first half, he Kittle, it was, you know, they weren't very involved. It seemed like they were just like, we're going to run this ball. Yeah. We're going to run this ball. Which I mm. think was the right approach. I think they just didn't yeah. stick with it long enough. I mean, okay. with the, with the you know, I think McCaffrey ended up having, you know, 20 80. carries. He had oh, yeah, 80 22, yards. 22. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so maybe maybe that's the number they wanted to hit. But Mm -hmm. uh, uh, supposedly reports came out before the Super Bowl saying of Kyle Shanahan saying this needs to be the Christian McCaffrey game. So if that's the case, I'm sorry, uh, Christian, I know you you might be a little older, but we're going to need about 35 touches. You know what I'm saying? We're going to need some to where. We are running down this Chiefs defense and you got to give credit where it's due. The Chiefs defense was balling. Them boys, them boy. I mean, you talk about. San Fran's receivers not really doing much. I mean, they was out there, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> that boy, that hey. boy, that boy, Trent yeah. Buffy, uh, LeJarius Sneed, Mike Edwards, them Sneed. boys, they was locking stuff. So, hey, Sneed um, needs a lot more credit. Sneed needs oh, yeah. a lot more light on shed on him and what he's done and his impact on that team and his playoffs. Every, I mean, Bills, I mean, uh, the, 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 the Dolphins, like strapping, strapping Hill. 
strapping. He's played impeccable this whole playoffs. Uh, the Ravens, he's just he's he is dominated this whole playoffs. If you go take a look at him man, and go go review the go review the tape on him, hey, they gotta bring him back. He's about twenty seven. I think he's he's still young, so they they gotta bring him back. They gotta bring that guy back. Yeah, thousands. I mean, guys. you you play you play DB, so you can speak to it a little better than yeah. me. But yeah. I mean, I, I think he's supposed to be a free agent uh, this summer. He gonna get a bag. He gonna get yeah, a we bag. Need him. So, we need him. We need we need him. <laughs> he was definitely one of the uh, best corners in the game, man. But um, nice. moving moving forward, man. Purdy, he's someone that people have had questions about all year long. Yeah. You know, yeah. we talked about how you know the controversy with Cam Newton and some of the stuff he said about him. People, yeah. people, people felt like this was the measuring stick. People felt like this was the game where Purdy was either gonna thrive yeah. and we would be praising him, saying there's no more questions, da, 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 or we would say, mm-hmm. "Well, he's everything we thought he was," which is mm-hmm. not that good in in a lot of people's eyes. So, yeah. my question for you is: Now, it, the season's over, Super Bowl ended, mm-hmm. all that. Looking mm-hmm. back at it, looking back at all the games he's played. Do you think the questions about Purdy should be silenced, or do you think they just get amplified even more going into the next season? Man, I think if he wins that Super Bowl is they it's on hush mode. But I believe that, I mean, he's he he's not elite. He's not an elite guy. We're not gonna put him in that category. Uh, the narrative may try, but we're not gonna do that. Even if you don't want to Super Bowl, we're not considering him elite. We're we're just he's not he's not elite. He hasn't shown elite talent yet. He hasn't shown elite ability yet. But Brock Purdy played great. We're not going to act like he did not play great in this game. He played phenomenal in this game. I watched start to finish from clock to clock out. He played great. He played great. He threw the right pass. He threw dimes all day. No interceptions. He didn't get the ball away. He didn't make just – he did what he had to do. I'm proud of how he played. I, I enjoyed how he played. I look forward to seeing what he's going to do next year. Um, I think he silenced some of the critics, man. I think he silenced some of the critics. He's a solid quarterback. He's a solid guy. Is he? Is he? Is he the elite guy? No, he hasn't shown that yet. If Pat Mahomes, if you swap those guys, you put Pat Mahomes on that team. Pat Mahomes gonna win by seventeen Super Bowl. What he got fifteen on his jersey? He gonna win fifteen Super Bowl. Yeah. Like let's that, that, that's we just not even close. If you get that's, Mahomes, that's KD, team, that's KD to the Warriors on, right there. To the Warriors, like come on, yeah. Man, you can't even put Pat on that team. It's it's ugly. So he's not. He's not elite. We're not going to put him in that category. He is not elite. Brock Purdy is not an elite quarterback. Is he good enough to get it done? Or with that surrounding team, there's guys that you put him around a great team, a great defense, a great weapons. They're guys just going to gonna do what they need to do. They're not going to do anything spectacular, crazy, outlandish. They're not going to just super wow you or win you the game with the individual performance like Pat Mahomes, 333 yards, two TDs, 66 rushing yards. He led the team in rushing. Like He might not do all of that for you, but will he get it done? Can he? Can he get it done? Yes. Can he not make the, yeah. the dumb plays, the bonehead plays? Yes. He can be conservative. He can do the right things. He can make the right decisions. I like Brock Purdy. I do. He silenced me. He silenced a lot of critics. Is he the franchise guy? Hey, he could pause it. Yeah, we, hey, yeah. hey, he got it. He we'll got see. it, man. He did his job. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. I think definitely um... – with his record, regular season and postseason, I mean, mm-hmm. back-to-back years, he goes to the NFC Championship game. He gets hurt. That's why mm-hmm. we couldn't really judge him off that game, but then spins back the next year and number one seed straight to the Super Bowl. Yeah. So yeah. I think he definitely – we'll see if if he's the franchise guy based on, you know, whether or not they're going to throw that bag at him and extend his contract <laughs> so he could, yeah. you know, move out of, you know – I mean, I think he, li- he damn near living in his dorm room <laughs> right now. <laughs> Right, right, right. But uh, yeah, um, yeah, man. I, I I think I'm kind of in the same boat as you. I think I think the questions questions I feel like are based on expectations, and I feel like people's expectations are kind of unrealistic. Like I I feel mm-hmm. like right now people are not separating talent and surrounding. Lamar Jackson has talent. Patrick Extreme. Mahomes has talent. Josh extraordinary Adams, talent you know these guys yes. are talented yes. and we knew that we knew that going into when they were going to be drafted yes. what nobody talking about no this guy was the last pick of the 2022 draft yes now, i got a list of, of names right here of quarterbacks that were drafted above him and i'm gonna list them off gb and then you can tell okay. me if any one of them would have 
the same amount of success, in your opinion, if they fell to the 49ers? So we got okay. Kenny Pickett, Desmond Ritter, Malik Willis, Matt Coral, Bailey Zappi, Sam Howell, Chris, a lot of Ken- – I mean, I don't even know who the hell that is. And uh, Skylar Thompson. These guys were all drafted. Wait, wait. Chris Oladokun? Yeah. Chris Oladokun. Hey, hey, shout out Chris Oladokun. He won him a chip <laughs> with the Chiefs. He's from Tampa, Florida, man. He was my brother's quarterback in Little League. Number three from the 49ers, Ray Ray McLeod. He was his quarterback. They all played together in Little League. There you go. Ray Ray, Chris Oladokun, my brother, Vitell Bryant. They all played together, man. So just for both of them to any one of them teams could have won, and I was happy with it, man. That is surreal for them boys to be Super Bowl champs in Little League and they in the Super Bowl in the league, man. That's yeah. a real moment. Quick shout out to Chris Lodokin, bro. Love, Ray Ray, love. Bit, bro, love. All right, they keep it going. Well, I'm glad you know who he is because I was very unfamiliar. <laughs> Come on, man. When yeah, I, yeah, when yeah, I saw yeah, bro. Yeah. Now, it's no disrespect. I'm just saying. Yeah, yeah. That's my boy. That's my boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, my point <laughs> is – None of these dudes, I don't feel, would have the same success as Brock Purdy. You know what I'm saying? Because, yeah. I mean, half of these guys aren't even starting on, on the team that they're on. So it's like no, no, 32 teams pass on this guy, Brock Purdy, at least six, seven times. And mm-hmm. we're going to be mad because he's not looking like Pat Mahomes or he's not look- – like, I understand he has a loaded team. But at the yeah. same time, this is still a guy who – He's still going to need some developing. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. he's not – if he was such a great generational dude, he would have been drafted, you know, number one overall, and we'd be having yeah. even higher expectations of him. But right. it's because of the team around him. Everyone has these unrealistic expectations of, you know, oh, well, he needs to look like Pat Mahomes or he needs to look like Lamar. Mm-hmm. That's not happening. And don't get me wrong, he still makes plays. That that play to uh, Kyle Juszczyk where he over yeah, – Yes. Uh, step back. You know, those are those are bald on. You know, he's he has talent. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And this is only his second year in the league. The only reason why he's been playing is because of injury. Jimmy mm-hmm. G was hurt, Trey Lance was hurt. If those guys don't get hurt, we don't even know if Brock Purdy, you know, he could still be holding Gatorade bottles for, for the starting quarterback. So right. um I think the questions, like I said, are based on the expectations, which are unrealistic. I get it. This team's loaded, but that doesn't mean that he's so, he's so talented and we need to see him making crazy plays because that's just not in his skill set. His skill set is yeah. I'm going to go in there, I'm going to make the right read, and I'm going to deliver a ball. The same mm-hmm. skill set we've seen with so many other quote-unquote game managers, which is not a bad thing. Like I think people, for whatever reason, think the term game manager is such a bad thing. Just- you have to be a game manager to be a quarterback. Tom Brady yeah. is the greatest quarterback of all time. He was a game manager. He was not yes, – he wasn't no scrambling for 20 yards. Surgical. You know what I'm saying? Not like, just yeah. surgical. He's just, just surgical making the reads. Nice. Exactly. So, um, in my opinion, you know, I, if you look back at my videos, man, I was kind of like this on Purdy, which a lot of people have been. Um, yeah. But in my opinion, he silenced most of the questions. Um, but – you know, going into the into the next season, you got to the big dance. Now, you know, can you take the girl home with you? That that's gonna be the question. Can you finish, uh, baby? You got the yeah. first, second, and third base, baby. Now we just gotta go home. We can gotta go home. It. That that's the question from here on out, man. But yeah, um, obviously the Chiefs, they they didn't shoot. They took last year's prom queen. They took this year's prom queen. I mean, I mean, what's going? On? They they taking everybody, girl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, nobody's safe. So, you know, obviously a historic run. We're talking about Pat Mahomes in that potential GOAT uh, conversation now. Mm-hmm. This was, again, a historical run. What do you feel was the best part or your favorite part of this Chiefs run? Man, um, just their ability to fight through adversity, man. Um, just coming – just during the season, just the beginning of the season, not maybe hitting the stride how they wanted to. Getting into the playoff as an eight seed. Who 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 is even thinking about an AFC winning the chip? I mean, if you can sneak past the first round, okay, doable. But to get to the championship, man, Miami, the Bills, all the way games, man, all the way games, the Ra- the Ravens, like they went through the gauntlet and still made it out alive, man. They made yeah. it out alive. That was so impressive to witness. Pat Mahomes, just how he's he just levels up. The game gets greater. The lights get brighter. 
and he just follows suit, man. He 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 gets brighter, he gets better, he gets greater in those moments, in those crunch time, clutch moments when you need it, they gonna give it to you, man. Their play yeah. calling is impeccable. Third, fourth down, they need it. Last drive, they gonna do it. They made some, they made some incredible plays, man. Andy Reid and Pat Mahomes, that duo is some serious. That is yeah. a serious duo right there, man. They, I just, I just love how they managed to just that gauntlet that they went through, man. AC fighting through cold weather, brick, um, just away games, man. Mom, Miami, Dolphins, Bills, Ravens, like, come on, man. They went through it and still came out on top. Bro, Mahomes is that guy. Like, he is that. Just so that they're going to go in the draft, they're going to they get they, – they're going to continue to get better. This is a young team. Yeah. That was the youngest defense that they've had. They're only going to get better. They're only yeah. going to get better. The Chiefs are scary. Pat Mahomes, I mean, uh, Josh Allen, Lamar Jackson, anybody in that division, y'all want to get to the bowl, y'all know who y'all got to get through, right? Big bad word. Gotta, yeah, of, y'all got to go through Debo. Yeah, yeah, y'all got to go through him, man. Y'all got to go through 15. And it's it's whoo, Lamar. Are you gonna? I don't know if Lamar gonna get back there. But Josh, I don't know if you're gonna get back there. <laughs> oh my gosh, because Pat Mahomes is up there, man, and he is. Yeah. Sheesh. Just their ability to get through the, that run that they had that gauntlet was the most impressive thing to witness, man. And in that last drive of overtime, man, just to witness Pat Mahomes' greatness, that was something special, man. Yeah. No. Yeah. I think you hit it on the head, man. I think. Um, especially with the early the early struggles. I mean, we're talking mid midway through the season and they're losing games because, you know, guys are dropping passes, Kadarius Tony lining up offside, stuff like that. Um, you know, stuff when when those things were happening, everyone kind of moved on from them. Okay, let's look at Baltimore. Okay, you know, um uh the Bills are looking hot. Miami mm-hmm. got some weapon, you know what I'm saying? We kind of moved on from KC, and then Mahomes mm-hmm. said, uh-uh, no, 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 we're not doing that. And so, again, mm-hmm. they they went round one against Miami, which a lot of us predicted was going to happen. But then the questions be, uh, rose up again against Buffalo because they went on the road. It was it, That was the headline everywhere. It's Mahomes' first playoff uh, road, uh, first playoff game on the road, can mm-hmm. we win? You know, Buffalo was on fire. Da, da, da. Uh, after Miami, they went on the road against Buffalo, and they were two-and-a-half-point underdogs. They went on the road against Baltimore, three-and-a-half-point underdogs. Make it to the Super Bowl and against San Fran, two-point underdogs. I mean, we talking about we talking about the reigning defending Super Bowl champs, and they're underdogs in all these games, and they still prevail. That means everyone was thinking, predicting that, Buffalo would knock them off. Baltimore would knock them off. And if not them, then San Fran would get the job done. None mm-hmm. of them were able to do it, man. And when we talked about it, you talked about it, uh, that that coaching duo, that coach-player duo of Reed and Mahomes, it's unbelievable, man. We just got to hope that, you know, Kelsey don't give this man a heart attack bumping into him and so that we can see this duo uh, go on for, for a little bit longer. That was crazy. That was crazy to witness. He just bunting them like that. That was wild. That was wild. You think like he can when he does it? Oh, it's just watching this under the rug. Get swept under the rug. Tom Brady snapping, throwing the iPads, yelling. It's under the rug. It's crazy. But yeah. man, you said you hit it on the head, man. Underdog. Pat Mahomes said underdog. Underdog. <laughs> Drake. Underdog. <laughs> Lamar. Lamar. <laughs> Awake. It's cold. Bill. Like. Hey man, we got 15. I must not know who running the show over here in KC. Y'all trip it. Like, this is what I do. It's, it's, like, it's like that. Uh, it's like that boy Kevin Garnett. You got Pat Mahomes. <laughs> Anything is possible. Any, <laughs> Anything is possible. Yeah, fact, man. You got Pat Mahomes. Anything is possible, man. That's a fact. Respect to 49ers, man. Brock Purdy and them boy. Purdy, man, played pretty damn good, man. Chris McCaffrey, <laughs> the duty had to do. It did their thing, man. But Pat Mahomes, oh my gosh, that was amazing to witness, bro. Oh boy, oh boy. All right, what we got? What else we got, Stuart, man? Well, that's our little, you know, wrap up recap uh, of the big game, of course. Um, yeah. we got about six and a half minutes left. I just wanted to take this time, man, for us to kind of look back on these last few weeks, man. Working together has been a blast. Uh, we'll kind of share our favorite moments, but also kind of individually. You know, the work don't stop here. We're going to keep working, keep putting stuff out, kind of talk mm-hmm. about where, where we're going from here. So I'll let you take the flow mm-hmm. on that. 
Oh, man, I'm just so grateful for this opportunity, man. Like I said from the beginning, <clears throat> I saw you start a platform, and I just saw you be consistent, and I like the consistency. Consistency, You have to respect consistency and someone's belief in self and their own vision, and I respected that, and I also wanted to get some some more content, some more experience out there, some more exposure to show yeah. what I can do in this yeah. realm. And so when I saw you doing that, I'm like, man, this is a perfect matchup. I know who I am. I know my personality. I know what I know. And I know he's on it. He does his thing. I said, I saw you at the senior game. I'm like, hey, bro, come on. Let's do this. Like, let's, let's lock in. <laughs> yep. He was like, come on. Let's do it. And I said, all right. You think I'm playing? I'm, I'm for real. And so we here, man. We here. Weeks later, we here. Man, we at the last episode, man. This is a blessing to be here. This was ex- this was extremely fun. We I'm just glad we put this on our resume. I'm just glad this is out here, man. Two people can come together. Two brothers can come together, man. Work together, knock it out, do it. It was this was this was fun, man. I'm glad we got a chance to do this. Um, future, man. I'm just gonna keep getting in front of that camera, man. Keep expressing, keep doing what I do, whether it's sports and a, a analyst, commentary, broadcasting, um, anything in that realm, um, acting. Um, it, it it doesn't stop, man. I'm getting in front of that camera. Uh, it, I'm gonna be in that front of that camera. We gonna do this. He's gonna do. He's gonna do this as well. Um, I also. Had some had some technical things, but now that uh, my my announcement on halftime, my uh, podcast is coming out. We 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 yeah. get that thing back up and running and jumping. Keep it organic, podcast man. We keep it real, authentic, organic. We bringing real people on there, man. Having genuine conversations with genuine people, entrepreneurs, anybody doing their thing. I'm gonna shed light on them and their journey, and we're gonna have a great time. And I got episodes already ready in the tuck, ready, yeah. ready in the tuck. It's ready. It's ready. So just about dude, it. don't run up. Don't run up. <laughs> I'm going to let it out. I'm going to let it loose. Yeah. So it's yeah. coming, man. I'm excited. Uh, appreciate you, Donovan, man. This is a great platform. Proud of you. Keep doing what you do, man. Yeah, man. That's that's all yes, I got. Sir. Yes, sir. Don't be shy to reach out. You know what I'm saying? I, I might have to take a trip to the ATL. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? But, yeah, man, uh, hit it on the head, man. You, uh, I told you from the jump, you know, I'm – I don't like kind of relying on people. I know people are busy. I know people have their schedules. And, you know, you kind of ask me, you know, why why haven't you kind of worked with anybody else? And it's just, you know, I, I don't like saying, you know, okay, let, we're going to shoot this day. And then it's, ah, well, I got something to do. You know what I'm saying? Stuff like that. So that's kind of why I've always been solo. But, you know, it just goes to show your character, you know, and, and, and your loyalty, your respect. Um because it, it was never it, it was no second guessing it was no second thoughts you know I said hey look I want to do this this and this you said cool let's do it I mean this dude is two hours ahead of me right now while we're shooting mm-hmm. it's seven thirty over here it's nine thirty for him he got work in the morning things like that mm-hmm. so it's like his dedication his commitment is why I know not only he was the perfect dude to do this with but also he gonna do big things in the future and I'm just uh, blessed to say, you know, in a few years when he is doing it big, I can look at the TV and be like, hey, I've made some videos with that dude right there. So appreciate you, man. It was definitely fun. Uh, As far as me, my future, man, I'm still in school. So I think uh, this is a big semester for me. I'm trying to graduate a semester early. So I'm uh, really going to lock in, focus up on school. Uh, we got spring ball coming up. I'm going to focus up on getting my ankle right and being right for football as well. So that being said, I am going to take a small break, you know what I'm saying, so I can lock in on that stuff. But come, you know, late spring, summertime, I'll be back with uh, Dizzy's discussions. I got a couple people in mind, a few people uh, lined up. You might see GB on there, you know what I'm saying, so we could chop it up a little bit. Um, Just never know. Yeah, yeah, so – that's kind of uh, my thought process, man. My end goal is, of course, to be on, um, you know, ESPN, Fox Sports, CBS Sports, whatever it is, man. Just talking sports, man. Kicking back and talking sports. I do got to get, you know what I'm saying? I got to tap in with GB about the wardrobe because I know I'm going to have to get, you know, a little suit and tie eventually. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, so, but that's the end goal, man. Everybody knows yeah. that. And we're just going to keep working, man. And with that mm-hmm. being said, that sure. segues right into the halftime speech where I'm kind of going to talk about, uh, of course, to get you through anything you need to get through. Got two minutes left. I'm going to keep it short, man. Uh, every journey starts with the first step. Every journey starts with Perfect. the first step, man. And if you're not willing to take that first step, then you're not willing to be great. And that's just what it is. And it doesn't mean it's going to be perfect. It doesn't mean it's going to go exactly how you go, how you want it to go. 
Mm -hmm. The important part is that you get out there, you take the risk. Real quick, I'm going to tell the story real quick. Uh, hey, no. my, my first, my very first interview, it was with my boy Dyson McCutcheon. I said, I was going to do this. My parents said, okay, we're going to get you a camera. So I'm thinking, you know what I'm saying? We're going to get the big, the big dog, you know what I'm saying? On the, on the, put it on the shoulder. They got me this $50 camcorder off Amazon. <laughs> and they said, if you're serious about this, record it, and then we'll get you another camera. I said, all right, bet. I recorded it. You know, a lot of people, if they ain't got the high end, high fancy schmancy stuff, they'll just turn back. No, I don't want to do it. No, I said, I'm recorded. And just, yep. uh, I've been thinking about that moment a lot just because from that very first interview to now, I can already see the progress, already see how I'm getting better. And um, I'm far from where I started, but I'm still far from where I want to be. So um, I'm going to continue to take those steps, man. And I know you're going to do the same, man. What you got to say? All right. So usually, man, I just, I just leave off where I just piggyback off of, you know, where Donovan led off, man. For me, uh, like he said, man, the journey starts with the very with the very first step, man. That's what it starts with, man. You you can't get anywhere until you take the first step. And oftentimes, man, it's not going to be how you want it, how you envision it. It's going to be a little ugly at first. It's going to be trial and tribulation. It's going to be hella obstacles at first. Like, it's not going to be perfect. It's not going to be pretty at first. It's going to be ugly. It's going to hurt. When you go to the gym, when you start doing some push-ups, after a while, you just start hurting, right? And as you do it for a week. <laughs> 20 push up get easy, 30 get easy, 40 get easy. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, so you yeah. just gotta keep going. You gotta keep going. You gotta water the plant, man. You can't just you can't just plant the seed and just just stare at it the whole time. Like, oh nah, man, you gotta water the plant, keep it moving, going about your day and put in the intentions, man. Nurture that plant. Come back to it. You know what I'm saying? Come back to it. Straight like that. When you grow lots, when you grow lots, when you start off, man, when you start with them lots at first, man, they get it's a stage you gotta go through, man. When they inch one, <laughs> they real low, and then they, they get a little bit and then you got a little it look crazy. You look throw like it's, it's it's not pretty, but you got to be able to get through that stage. You know what I'm saying? You got to yeah. be able to push through that stage to get where you're trying to get to. I mean, if you just look at me now, if you just look at me now, if you just look at me now, you know what I mean? You're going to get to where you want to be at some point. You know what I'm saying? So you just got to you just gotta stay down, man. Take the first step, man. When I started, just put myself out there on social, on media, start my own podcast, man. <clears throat> I started off with an iPad. I only had an iPad, and I'm like, man, I got to, man, I need a camera, man. I got to afford a camera. I got to buy a camera. Da, da, da. Man, just, God just opened a door for me, man. I had the intentions already of doing it. The guy by the name of Darius Henderson, man, the senior, he went to Rocky, he had graduated. He was gone, but he had hit me. He was like, hey, bro, I still got some lights and stuff like that, and this, that, and the third, and equipment. It's it's, it's in the room, da, da, da. It's in this, this room at school. You can just go grab it. I'm like, that's me? Like, bro, you can have it. That's yours. I'm like, what? Yeah. So now I got professional bright light cameras, man. And it's like, to me, it was like, all right, God, like, what you going to do? This, I gave I, I gave you what I could give you. Now, what you going to do? Show me that you want it. And eventually, a year later, I did get the camera that I did want. But I had to start somewhere. I started off outside. Yeah. My first video was outside at midnight, like late night outside. I'm sitting outside with two of my own boys. Like, if you just seen it, it's, we got chairs. We got all type of stuff to, to just to make the... The, the scene, the, the setting, what it is. And it's like, now I'm in a rented out space. Now I'm in a nice space with nice quality, with great quality cameras and great lighting. And it's all a journey, man. It's all a journey. Now I'm here. You know what I'm saying? Just taking the step, taking the leap is going to open so many doors for you. So don't be afraid to jump out that port. Your biggest blessings is right outside that comfort zone. Just go step out of it. Go, go do it. Go try. Go, just go try. Just go try, man. Just go try, man. Take the first step, man. That's all I can say, man. Donnie, not even hit it on the head, man. And uh, yeah, man, he's taking the first step with this. I'm taking my first steps with just a lot of things going on, especially in 2024. I'm doing a lot of things. I don't want to speak on every single thing, yeah. but things yeah. are happening, man. Things are in motion. Things are in motion. And, man, we're making progress, though. Progress is nothing. Motion is nothing without progress. So make sure y'all making progress. Don't just have motion. Have progress and progression. You feel me? What's the motion without progression? So, yeah, yeah. man. Have time, man. Have time. <laughs> Have time, man. <laughs> Have time, man. Have time with Disney and GB. Yeah, man. This ended off great, man. I'm so grateful for had this opportunity. This was amazing. I hope y'all enjoyed, man. Please yeah. let us know what y'all think. We may come right back around next year. You just never know. But I'm grateful for this, man. This was amazing. Have time. GB, Dizzy, Dizzy GB. Hey man, we just making moments out here, man. Yeah. Hope y'all enjoy it. Yeah, man. yeah. Enjoy. definitely wanna uh definitely wanna get my things, man. I uh 
this uh this like you said, this is something special, this is something fun. Um and again, we talk about taking those steps, you know, this is just another step. And one thing that I, I'm a firm believer in and that I, I believe or I always say is kind of like it's easier to take those steps, easier to take those risks when you got, you know, a good uh, crowd, good family, good people around you to fall back on. So for everybody that's been constantly, you know, watching, liking, you know, leaving a comment or two or hitting us up, whether that's, you know, on our page or privately, you know, with words of encouragement, things like that, you know, appreciate you guys from, from the bottom of my heart, really do. Um, I already got a couple ideas and me and GB, we'll, 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 we'll talk, we'll, we'll be back. We'll be back with something like this uh, in the near future, but be sure, you know, that you go check out his channel. Tons of good stuff. I mean, he, like he said, he, he ain't really got started yet, but he already has some good stuff already up there. So please go check out his channel and his accounts on all social media platforms. Of course, you know, go ahead, hit the subscribe button. If you knew for me as well. And, you know, yeah, in Jesus name, everything, everything going to go according to plan, man. We just going to keep putting in that work and, we're going to see each other at the top. That's always been the plan, man. Yes, sir. That's always the plan, man. That's always the plan. Appreciate y'all, man. Keep it organic, too, by the way. If y'all just, just, if y'all feeling like following, yeah, y'all feeling, just if y'all just so happen to, if, just see what it's about. I ain't going, I ain't going, I ain't in the business of trying to convince you. Now, just, just go ahead and see. You going. You might just stay once you get there. So keep it organic, <laughs> man. 24 7, man. What we do. But yeah, man. Have time with you being dizzy, man. This is a blessing. We're not stopping. We keep going, man. It's just a start. It's just a start, man. Blessings. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> Have time. Let's go. Let's go. There he is. That's a wrap.